Hello guys, I'm the Gamer Raider 10 and welcome back to more Let's Play Okami. In the last episode, we traversed inner Yoshpet and made it to the Spirit Gate, on our only lead to Lika's whereabouts. And as it turns out, the Spirit Gate is a time machine. It brought us to Kamiki Village 100 years in the past, during the Legend of Orochi. In this episode, unfortunately in the last episode, we knocked out Nagi, make, thus complicating thus complicating the legend and possibly rewriting history. So what we have to do now is swipe the white sacrificial robe from Nami. Over there. Hold on a sec. Look at that, Ami. That's Nami. Thank God her arm is where it is! Otherwise, uh, I have to take this off of YouTube. She's bathing in the lake. And look! The white sacrificial robe's there for the taking. Hey, what's with the glowing barrel of sake? You think it could be that eight purification sake? Keep it down, Furball. You're the one who's talking. Nami must be purifying herself before putting on the robe. Pretty noble of her, considering what she's gonna gobble her up. That's her devotion that made the legendary eight purification sake. If I could just get an up close view of her like this, I'd, I'd. <laughs> anyway, this is our big chance, Nami. Even in a tense moment like this, he has to find ways to be a pervert. Snag her white sacrificial robe while she's busy bathing. You ready? If you try to move, this is the only time in the game you actually have to actively walk. If you try to move fast... Help! Someone help! Shiro is prowling about the village again! What? What that heck was that? I'm pretty sure it was supposed to say, What the heck was that, you numbskull? You gotta be more careful. You gotta walk up slowly and silently. Once you're close enough, snatch the robe. Good idea to do here is use your aim yourself with the with the right analog stick, not with the left analog stick. Swing by, pick it up slowly but surely. Keep it with a steady thumb. Way to go, Ami! Once you reach this scene, you're good. The right sacrificial robe is ours. Let's go get that Nagi into this thing. Now that we have the white sacrificial robe. Okay, we got the robe. By the way, real quick, last episode we also saw some folks who look like Camilla and Camilla. Ironically, Camilla and Camilla's ancestors were the ones who planted Konohana and, Ko and Kamiki. And Konohana is even from a different place. Now all we gotta do is get Pops here into it. I know it's kind of a weird time to bring that up, but I didn't want to bring it up last episode and spoil that we went to the past. Hey, <clears throat> doesn't, he, doesn't he look pretty? Now Nagi can pretend to be the maiden sent to be sacrificed. This should be just like the legend said. Right, Ami? Not bad, if I say so myself. Anyway, let's get on with it. Let's take him over to the moon cave before he wakes up. After all, he's all dressed up for his date with destiny. And for the second to last time, we get giving Kushi a ride, meaning things are real. If you try to go to any of the villagers right now... For instance, uh, Nazo, which is the name of the kid from the last episode. Yes, like the, yes, like the Sonic fan character. Ooh, forgot this chest. <clears throat> Nazo and his mom will beat you up, but the question is, Tony Pottery. The question is, what about Mr. and Mrs. Grapefruit? Yep, they try to beat you up. Foul beast! So, yeah. I kind of swear they made comments about Nagi being in the white sacrificial world, but actually, now that I think about it... Nagi? What are you doing with Shiranui there? Stop messing around like that, Ami. History's gonna get all mixed up if you don't do this right. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, what's interesting over here is this merchant. Hmm? A perfect white coat. Those razor sharp eyes. You must be Shiranui! Ah, someone help me! I don't taste good! No, no, it'd be a terrible sacrifice! What the heck? He thinks we're gonna eat him or something. He does look kind of plump. I'm, I'm as plump as a dumpling, but I'm poisonous! Yes, poisonous! L look, I'll sell you anything you want. P please spare me! Watch what happens if you talk to him again. 
It's back again! Hey! Look, I'll spare you anything you want. Please spare me. What are you so afraid of? We're paying customers, you know. I love that. But anyway, go ahead and sell this stuff. <clears throat> the good news is you get a lot of money from your trip to the past. Like, look at all that. You can buy all three of the fourth tier weapons here. He actually sells more weapons than the weapons dealer in Seon City, ironically. You can get the Eighth Wonder, the Resurrection Bees, and the Trinity Mirror here. Other than that, he sells normal stuff. Uh, I better buy some fish feed bags just in case. Now that that's done. I'm gonna say outright, there are a few bugs with this area, and ooh, that's ominous. So this is Shinshu Field a hundred years ago. Hey, you've given a piggyback ride to the Moon Cave before. But it was that babe Kushi last time. The view, not to mention smell, was a whole lot better then. I'm not sure I'm liking this whole going back to the past bit business. Business. There's a lot of praise here. Like, there's a lot to see and do in century-old Shinshu Field. Alright, first off, we go over here. These are Orochi's minions a hundred years in the past. These are clay soldiers. And they said they also have a very weird flute sound. Along with some clay samurai. These guys give a lot of money when you bring them down. Their floral finishers are us are usually missed, so. Take note of that. Uh, there is something I kind of need. I kind of need, um... Even thanks for it. But look at that! Almost 30,000 yen for just one fight with them. It's crazy! You really want to go about killing these guys immediately. This is, actually, this is likely a... Sun Shrine. I strongly recommend, I hate to cut in such a tense moment, but most of this is going to, most of my time here is going to be, oh right, I wanted a peace ball, or no, we're actually, we're good, never mind. Most of my time here is going to be dedicated to just fighting these enemies because, for one, lots and lots of money, and we're going to need lots and lots of money pretty soon. Second of all, there's a place where, how do they take damage? It's a place we're never be we're never going to be coming back to, so I want to make I want to ensure that I have I get all the money and treasures I can here. So I'll just kind of head to treasures and clovers, and that's about it. But yeah, look at that twelve thousand yen. So as much as I hate to cut, I'll be right back. Oh, actually, before I cut, this is a clay shogun. Clay Shoguns require a require multiple power slashes to take down their heads. So bear that in mind. You damn it. I believe their floral finishers are their floral finisher is power slash. Or no, it's actually missed. Yeah, and I think they give four demon fangs for taking them down. It's pretty insane. Look at all that cash! 33,000! So yeah, I want all the I want all the money imaginable, and also it fills up the best area a little bit, so we have that, so I'll be right back for real this time. Right here, this clover is is on the way to what would normally be the nameless man's house or Hana Valley. Gives you 30 praise. Oh, these right here. I don't know what these guys are called, actually, off the top of my head. They're basically blue imps. Their full finishers are power slash, weirdly enough. You know, you think it'd be like win or, you know, miss. Take this guy down. Alright. God, look at all that yen. We're basically gonna double the amount of yen we had coming out of here. We wanna go through that gate on the way to where the Guardian Sapling will end up being because in this chest is a silver pocket watch. It's only for 30,000 yen, it is the best selling, it is the highest value treasure in the entire game. Inside this iron rock, just like a, just like the iron rocks we've seen before in Ryoshima Coast and not Agata Forest, I believe. 
Okay, I can understand how that feels. Is a clover worth 40 praise? Oh, actually, real quick, there's a new enemy. Uh, first of all, you can actually stun. You can actually get the um. I think your power. Yeah, cherry bomb is this guy's full finisher. I forget what kind of soldier that is. Uh, actually, let me check the best here, yeah, because I'm very curious. Okay, those guys are called clay drummers, and those and those blue imp analogs, those are clay flyers. Gotcha. But what, but what I meant to say was, you can actually you you can actually counter the um, bucket Namahage and the clay drummers through using your reflector as a sub weapon. So make sure, so bear that in mind because that might be very 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 helpful helpful. Here's this other iron rock on this area where the horses would normally, well, where the guardian statue would normally be. That has 40 praise. Inside this chest over here, this big chest is a whole, is an exorcism slip L, so make sure you pick that up over by where the dojo would normally be. Over here on this cliff overlooking the way into Kamiki Village is another clover that gets you 30 praise. Hooray, I have no life! Over here is this clover. I believe this clover is right beyond, it's actually right where the bridge would normally be that would lead to Tama's place and the observatory that we used to go to Kamui also nets you 30 praise because every single clo clover here gives you at least 30 praise. And over here by what would normally be the port for Agata Forest is yet another 30 praise clover and I believe now we can upgrade our astral pouch. Yep. Excellent. So you just gotta do that two more times. There's another clover right here inside this iron rock. This is like re this is like rewarding you for being being diligent for getting all the extra power ups and goodies in the game. Over here is yet another thirty praise clover. We go over here. I believe we need only about 750 more praise before we fully upgrade everything. I'm not gonna bother trying to get those. I can understand where that goes. Oh come on! All right, 11 praise there, and get that shit glass. As you can see, the sh the moon shrine is not here, and also we can't really go into the water on La on Hatami Lake or Lake Hatami, I think. But just like when we brought Kushi here, Orochi is stirring. Real quick, I strongly, strongly recommend you save just in case. I don't know if this happens in the HD version. In the SD version... Actually, hang on, yeah. But in the SD version, this area is prone to is prone to pla is prone to crashing. So just in case... And actually... You know, actually, let me use... Let me use 8th Wonder and switch to... The, uh, and switch... Myself open. Right here, we got a glimpse of this enemy, sorta kinda, in the Suta Ruins all that time ago. This is a Dogu. Dogu are basically Blight, but as a normal enemy. So some of the attacks we didn't see from Blight, we're actually gonna see here. Like here, watch. He's got those summoned swords going. He's got that sword swing. Let's see if I can kill all these here. As you can see, he's got that teleporting move. Okay, get that at the last second with those summon swords. The chaos control does not work. Whoa, that was close. I believe their floral finisher is power slash, I want to say. Right? Yeah! Look at that! 
four demon fangs for power slashing these guys correctly. Let's see if I can get. I do damage. Kurt, what is? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, never mind. All right, that's how we do it. That's how we do it in the bush. For defeating these guys, you get a golden peach. So very nice. We get 20,240 yen from them. And the game didn't crash, so that's good. Look at it. Look at how much yen we have. We went in here with like less than 100,000. Got 124 demon things. Very nice. Moving forward. Hmm. There's no barrier this time. I don't know. She must think no one would dare come in here. We should still be careful no matter how unprepared that snake is. I mean, if you think about it, you managed to slay Orochi 100 years ago, but you died too. And you were at your peak back then. Legend says you appeared each year around the time of the sacrifice. Back then you were called Shiranui and were said to be a monster. Here's the thing. Shiranui is not Amaterasu's name for when she was in this when she was in her peak state a hundred years ago. That's actually a nickname given to her. She was all she's always been called Amaterasu. So how come you didn't just go get rid of Orochi right away? Well, I suppose you had your reasons. But I bet it made Orochi think you were a big fat chicken. And now he wakes up. All that battling before didn't do anything, but now he wakes up. Huh? Where am I? I like this. What in the world? Why am I wearing this? Hey, Pops, you finally came to. Now you can pretend to be the human sacrifice and slay Orochi. Then Nami will fall for you big time. What are you talking about? Hey, sweating. He really is like Susano, his descendant. Oh, yes, of course. I am Nagi, the greatest warrior who ever lived. Brace yourself, Ami! Here it comes! Waiter, take this back! <laughs> Looks like Orochi can taste the difference between man and maiden. I don't want to know how he can tell the difference. Well, this is it, Ami. Psych yourself up. We're about to face Orochi in peak condition. Welcome to the Moon Cave. As you can see, the stairs are fully intact this time. We don't have to go through that dungeon again. Now, I'm going to say, by the way, I don't like how Eighth Wonder looks. I think it looks kind of ugly, frankly. Look, Ami. The Sake Barrel. And the Golden Lucky Cat ruins it. A purification Sake. Too bad Orochi didn't drink it down when he tried to eat Pops. I guess things are never that easy. Still, it ain't over till it's over. I mean, victory is still up for grabs, ain't it? You want to check the description of the A Purification Socket? I like how we still have the, the K9 tracker, by the way. Legendary Socket brewed by Nami, capable of intoxicating monsters. Looks like I'm still recording both. We're good there. Through that golden gate. 
As you can see, Orochi's looking a lot more golden. Hey, isn't that... Oki? An evil power lured me to this cave. But now that you're also here, there can be no doubt. This must be Orochi's stronghold. Hmm? Ami, there's someone passed out over there! Oh no! It's Lika! So this is the dreaded Orochi. Ami, this time's the real deal. Remember, you just barely managed to slay Orochi at your peak. And in the end, you died too. Fools, how dare you stand in my way. I shall claim my 100th sacrifice and become god of the underworld. Then I shall bring eternal darkness upon all the land. But first, you shall pay for defiling my dark sanctuary. I am a stranger to these lands. Your words mean nothing to me. Now, Kutane shall feast on your blood. That should be more than enough to fulfill its need. Getting our fight against Orochi. This is the real deal this time. This is Orochi 100 years ago when he was at his strongest. Apart from that, this fight is largely the same. The only difference is that this time you don't have to hear Eason's whole spiel about, you know, hey, he's roaring. You can pour the sake into his mouth. There's really not anything different about this fight. I can tell you that outright. Well, a few things are different. I think he does hit harder now because you hit harder. Also, you know what, let's go this way, considering this is probably easier. Also, we have a double jump this time. Uh, hey! I'm not dealing with you just yet, poison head. I can see why that's going. Okay, get that into his mouth. Might as well deal with you while we're at it. Alright, do that. Damn it, I was trying to was trying to get the poison head to go. I never mentioned it before, but this song friggin' rocks. This song is called Battle with Orochi. Why are my winds so weird lately? Anyway, this song is called Battle with Orochi, and it is so friggin' cool. Anyway, just like before, the snake is down. Climb up his back. I don't know how long he actually stays drunk for. Uh, just like just like with Kushi, Lika's not here. Go up to his back, and let's use that holy... That holy Monel. What? Use that extra slip out that we got. Goes down in one hit, but not quite. Alright. See if we can do the thing like in the intro. Yeah, there we go. Oh, whoa, he's he's going crazy. Uh, well, this is kind of awkward actually. So, like I said, in the in the intro cutscene to the game, it's really cool that they actually show you how to fight Orochi. It's actually, like I said, really, really, really cool. Who's gonna get take down? both of these heads. No shame in, use, in using infinity stones bec because this fight does drain a lot of your ink. Bring him down. 
use that. Thank God I got, I, I got, thank God I got Power Slash 3. There we go, yeah, that's how real men deal with Auto Chief. Go this way, so, yeah, it's really cool how, it's kind of like, it's kind of like in Takashi's Challenge, how in the commercials for the game you can use the wrong thing. How in commercials for that game you can actually get cryptic hints as to what exactly you're supposed to do in the game. But in this case, it's more like the game's whole intro. That's alright. That's alright. That's why we have Power Slash. Uh, what happens if we use electricity, actually? Because we have Thunder now. Ooh, not bad. Alright. Use a lot of our ink, though. Okay, can't do anything about the light. Gonna have to deal with it. Gonna have to deal with us having no god hit either. Deal with our ass getting burned, and there goes our perfect. Oh well. You win some and you lose some. And now I recommend that if you have the water tablet at this point, it's good to have it equipped because, as you know, the waterhead can do that. You can flood the arena. Okay. Confused again. It's not. Again, the lightning head gets confused because he's on the opposite end of Orochi's body from the fire head, and the fire head is a leader. So it's not that it's stupid, it's that it's it's that it doesn't know what's going on half the time. Okay, do your thing with water. Luckily I have a way to deal with water. Okay. Smack you in the face. Give you water. How about a magazine? Let's see if we can use fire bursts. We didn't have fire bursts before. That does considerable damage, actually. But but normal fire is enough to ruin the day of the of, uh, of the water head. Okay. And do that. Now, as you can see, that tornado requires two gale storms to fully dispel. <coughs> Alright. Smack you in the face. Smack you in the face again. We didn't have a glaive last time too. It's kinda interesting how this fight has changed, how not only does Orochi have not only does Orochi have a little bit more ouch. Not only does Orochi have a little bit more health, he also has he also you also have more abilities of your own, such as such as Thunder, <clears throat> and actually, let me try to lose. Such as Thunder, Gale, well, not Gale Storm, just Thunder, Fire Burst, etc. Wow, that's all the damage that did? Good grief. Uh, I really like to not deal with this head anymore. There we go, Wolf. I finished you off as a normal wolf, that the golden ink pot's still in the one. Anyway. Oh, my God. 
The moment that the legend of Nagi was fulfilled. It was the most beautiful sight one could imagine. Bathed in moonlight, Nagi's sword twinkled, reflecting golden light. With Orochi's body cleaved, the beast was sealed for 100 years. The sword was, du was dubbed Sukuyomi and enshrined in the moon cave. Little Lika, the Yoina girl who had been tainted by Orochi's dark power, had her curse lifted and returned to normal. However, one man, Oki, did not show such signs of recovery. Orochi's power had interfered with his most desperate attack. 
Despite the grave danger, Kutane did not exhibit the silver glow. Oki's heart burned at the thought of what Nagi's sword had wrought. Thoroughly humiliated and boiling with rage, he skulked away into the darkness, making sure that no one lay eyes upon him. <laughs> I have slain the beast. I, Nagi, have defeated the dreaded Orochi. We know, we know. Now will you stop repeating yourself? I commend your bravery, Shiranui. But it was I who felt the foul beast. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. Furball here did all the work. Anyway, where did Oki go? He left without a word. Well, at least we saved Lika. I've got a bad feeling about this. What's that Orochi up to now? I thought he was dead. Hey, Pops! You better get over here, quick! Yeah, we're going to get it. 